Okay, so this video is intended to give you a more in-depth breakdown of the document that you have available for download with you, which is tips on how to summarize a literary text. So, if we're talking about how to summarize a literary text, these are the things that you need. First thing that you want to include is the author. Always make sure you to start with the author. There's no other reason. And as you do that, you'll probably introduce the title of the text too. So author and title. And the last one is, and the other one is text type. Text type means is like, is that a novel? Is it like a full book? Is it like a short story? Is it a poem? Is it a song? Is it a play? Is it a ramblings of a crazy person outside the grocery store? What type of text and what format was this information delivered to you? For our class, it's going to be mainly novel, short story, and then the occasional crazy ramblings of a person outside the grocery store. But that'll just be homework. Worry about that later. So if I were to take these three things, maybe I'll make them, I don't know, let's make them green on here. And I'll make them green right here. The short story developed by Ray Bradbury. So, like, boom. In the span of like 10 words, I knocked out three things. Well, those are three easy things. It gets a little trickier here. A big thing in summarizing a literary text is to explain the main conflict. So the whole thing you're going to summarize focuses on the main conflict, whether or not that's the entire story, or if you're summarizing a chapter or two of a story, what was the main conflict in that section of the text, which may or may not line up with the main conflict in the story overall. So focus on explaining the main conflict. So the main conflict, I explain, is about two parents, George and Lydia Hadley, who struggle with their children over control of a nursery in their house. So I will, I think I've frozen, word, there we go. So if I were to take that, maybe I'll make that one like purple. And then I'll match it up with purple. Now, here's the part where it's the most of your summary. If you look down here, the rest of our summary, you're like, oh my gosh, it's one thing. Well, yeah, one thing, and this is the hard part, you have to explain details about the plot and the setting that would help someone who hasn't read the story understand the main conflict and how it ends. you got to explain how it ends, which I know is a weird thing for a lot of people to do. So as I go down through here, I mean, you can read this, but I'll read it once out loud to you if you want. So the nursery is no average nursery, though. It has the ability to project the thoughts of any person who is inside it onto the walls in a very real detail. Throughout the course of the story, George, the father, becomes increasingly concerned about the images of an African veldt his children are creating in the nursery walls and the images of lions on those walls who are always eating something in the distance. At a certain point in the story, real objects, such as George's wallet and his wife's scarf, start showing up in the nursery covered in blood, suggesting things in the nursery that were imaginary can somehow become real. The children deny creating the images of the nursery at first. However, when they admit that they have been making up the image, they then threaten their parents not to turn the nursery off. It is at this point in the story George decides he will shut the whole nursery off and take his family on vacation. Just before he does this, his children convince him to let them play in the nursery one more time. He and his wife hear their children calling for them in the nursery. When they go down to see what they want, the children lock the parents in the nursery. The main conflict in the story ends with the lions approaching George and Lydia, and we as readers must <coughs> infer that the lions then eat George and Lydia. So basically what I've done here is explain details about the plot and the setting that would help someone who hasn't read the story understand the main conflict and how it ends. So i got to include extra details for someone that hasn't read the story. And that's probably the hardest part of writing a summary or writing about literature in general is trying to help, writing as if you're explaining to someone that hasn't read the story. So if you notice here, the thing I left out was like extra details that don't relate to the main conflict. Like I didn't talk about the house at all because it has really not a lot to do with the main conflict. It all takes place in the nursery. I didn't talk about the psychologist friend because really he was just a dude that was there. But he didn't have much to do with like the parents, the children and their conflict or the children killing their parents. Also, the other thing I left out is my opinion. In a summary, there's not a lot of room for your opinion. You're just telling about what happened in the story in terms of the main conflict and explain to someone who hasn't read it. So the idea behind this is that to think about it like you're just being a huge jerk when you write a summary. You're pretending that the person you're writing to hasn't read the story and your goal is just to ruin the story for them by giving them just enough detail so they totally understand the main conflict 
and know exactly how it ends. So if it helps to think about it, when you write a summary, just be a huge jerk.